Hey everyone, welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we have the Kindle Voyage versus the Paperwhite 2. This is the old generation versus the new generation. Many people have the Paperwhite 2 and they're thinking to themselves, you know, is the Voyage worth upgrading to? So this e-reader actually looks a lot different than a lot of e-readers. It has a couple lines and dots for page turns, whether you're left or right-handed. You have a micro USB port on the bottom for transferring data and charging your device. Nothing on the top or either of the two sides. The back has a nice piano finish at the top and it has a magnesium infused plastic for the feel at the back. We also have a flush power button on the back that takes um, inspiration from their HDX line of de devices. And the Kindle Paperwhite 2 has nothing on either of the sides or the top. The back is simply a thin plastic and we have a power button, status indicator light and micro USB port on the bottom. So you can see there's a lot of similarities between the home screens here. The books may be a little bit different, but uh, the overall design and layout is fairly similar. Home button, back, controlling the illumination levels. Now you can see here that this does have a max button which automatically puts it from you know wherever it is to the maximum but here you actually have auto brightness that you can turn on and it'll turn the brightness depending on the levels of light in your environment which I think is pretty cool you can see here in the settings menu uh, not too much is a uh, different uh, you see shop Kindle free time which is your parental control settings vocabulary builder but you do see that this does have a view special offers because the Voyage ed edition that we have here is the special offers we paid edition. to remove the offers on this guy. Right is rain. So the core activity of any Kindle e-reader is purchasing e-books. So by default, this is the list view here. Okay, so this is the generally what you're gonna see. It'll tell you if it's X-ray enabled and we'll show you X-ray in a few minutes. But if you're ever on the Amazon website, buying and purchasing products, you can see that this is pretty well a mirror image. It doesn't show you everything on the screen because it has see all, uh, show more. So it doesn't take a long time for any of these pages to load. Uh, but you do have try a sample and you can click on that and have it instantly delivered to your house. I mean, to your e-reader, your virtual house. You were looking at the house logo. I know. Yeah. By pausing the video, you guys can take a side-by-side -side look at both of these guys. Remember that this is running a screen that is a millimeter sunken down, whereas this one is completely flush. I've noticed from the book having the same font size, same settings and everything like that, that the resolution and PPI difference is profound. We can jack up the font so you guys can see for yourselves if the, you know, if the text difference, how pixelated it is and things like that. Yeah, the Voyage is quite nice. I yeah. do think it is uh, easily the best resolution on an e-reader. All right, so let's uh, change the font back. Now you can see here, you can adjust the line spacing, the margins, and there's six different fonts to choose from. Over Amazon does a good job at not overwhelming you in terms of giving you too many complicated options. They both have line presses, uh, long presses. They both have highlight capabilities. You can box large amounts of text. And from there, you get options like add a note or translation. These both do really the same thing. So translation is you can translate any language to any language as long as it's under this drop down menu. So even large bodies of text like that can translate it. And of course, you have a nice QWERTY keyboard that is very responsive. These both have Amazon X-Ray, which is their Service that tells you about the people, places, and things in a book, terminology. You 
It's a neat little feature. Okay, now when you turn a page in a book, it's done mainly with swiping and gesturing. The Voyage has these little sensors here that have haptic feedback so you can actually he you can actually feel a little bit of a vibration now you can see here that it has page press and you can actually turn this on and off so you can actually turn the buttons on and off but you can adjust the feedback settings so you could uh, change the different levels of vibration you can turn them off low medium high you can kind of use this, you know, use your own personal judgment on finding your own sweet spot, but you can actually change the pressure settings. This is how hard you press or lightly you press to initiate a page turn. You see we have it at medium, uh, but you can actually turn it on low and just kind of barely glance it and it'll turn a page. So looking at these two PDFs, this is the monsters manual and we go to this one because it has an even amount of text and pictures and what we're going to do is do some pinch and zooms and what you'll see here is a little mini map show up on each of the corners and this allows us to locate where we are on the pdf we'll just do a little bit of a zoom on this dude let it render and you guys can make the decision which one you like more These line of e-readers also allow you to long press on text. And what this does is allow you to make alterations to even a side-loaded PDF, like highlights, notes, even translations. So not a lot of e-readers actually allow you to do that. Now it's important to note that not all text is highlightable. Like uh, the, I noticed that with things in the, the heading. Right that it's not but any of the sort of the darker text yes. is speaking of darker text you can actually increase the light or darkness level uh, in a PDF document which I find is pretty cool so we can actually increase it so it's darker and then if we pinch and zoom this image you can kind of optimize it so it has about the same levels. Now you kind of notice that between when we pinch and zoom and the image fully, you know, getting developed, it often takes a few seconds. Right. Both of these e-readers have Goodreads functionality and uh, Goodreads is a ebook discovery community and you can form virtual book clubs. You can flag books as wanting to read, you can create your own shelves full of books that you've read in the past or, or want to read. You can actually add Amazon books that you've purchased into your Goodreads shelf, which makes things easier, just mm -hmm. clicking and things like that. So when it comes to the Paperweight 2 and the Kindle Voyage, Peter, do you think that upgrading to the Paperweight 2 to the Voyage, is the Voyage worth it to upgrade to and pay that sort of, it's $199, so it's, it's it's more expensive than what the Paperweight 2 was when it first came out. If you own this, is this a compelling enough reason to upgrade? It's kind of hard to say. I find it very strange how the Voyage added vibration inside their devices because that's that's a little... It's a, it's a piece of technology that spins and that's how you feel the vibration. I'm kind of surprised they put the money towards that and not towards having any audio on this device. So if you were to ask me to update, upgrade from this to that, I'd say it's not necessary. They both have good reads, they both have glow lights, they both have great screens and touch screens. It wouldn't be necessary to upgrade to the Voyage, I think. Yeah, the extra PPI and the extra resolution, you don't really see it in PDF files and text just looks marginally better in your standard ebook. Mm -hmm. I find that it looked a little bit better on the Voyage, but as you saw, we put these side by side and the the differences were fairly negligible. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you own the Paperweight 2, that's probably good enough for now. This is a, just an incremental sort of update, but I do like the fact that the screen is flush with the bezel um, that should certainly appeal to people that are you know, used to their tablets and smartphones on a daily basis. The sunken screen does seem a little bit dated by today's standards. So if you 
you know, have an older model of a Kindle, like the Kindle keyboard or the basic from a few years ago, upgrade to the Voyage because it's hella solid. But if you have last year's model of the Paperweight 2, I don't really think this is a mm -hmm. reason enough to really spend $200 to upgrade. But of course, we leave the decision up to you guys. Let us know your thoughts. If you have either of these two devices or if you're thinking about upgrading and you have any questions on anything that we didn't cover in the video, just because we can't make these videos to be 30 minutes to show you everything mm -hmm. exactly. uh, drop a comment below and we'll attempt to answer each and every one of them thanks for watching a comparison of the kindle paperweight 2 versus the kindle voyage my name is michael this is peter everybody take care